Hello, everyone. We welcome you to the Diller Invitational at uh, Ayersville. It is a little cold, a little chilly on this Saturday afternoon, but great to be with you with Miles Holiday. I'm Randy Roberts. We got our first set of runners in the blocks. We're going to kick things off with the girls' 100-meter hurdles. Now, Randy, where else would you rather be than right here, right now, getting to the meat of the track season? This is going to be a fantastic effort today. Getting ready for our opening event. We'll uh, give you lane assignments quickly here before they start. Riley Brent of Patrick Henry will be in lane one. Mackenzie Shock of Continental in lane two. Kaylee Dockery of Ayersville will be in lane three. Lexi Niemeyer of Minster in lane, uh, lane four. Excuse me. Sophia Whirling of Minster in lane five. Mariah Morales of Archibald in lane six. Alana Pedraza of Archibald in lane seven. Kaylee Dockery of Tenora will be in lane eight. The top time, Niemeyer in lane four for Minster, 16.71. Keep an eye on Dockery uh, from Defiance, uh, Ayersville, uh, 17.13. She has been a great runner in her career. So 44th Diller Invitational, the running finals now officially underway. And Dockery off to a great start, snapping that back leg through. Whoa! Trying to get the home school Ayersville Pilots an early win, and it looks like Haley Dockery will do just that. We'll see if we can get the official scoring. They did have the scoreboard up and running with time, so we'll see if they are able again to uh, sink that in. That was really helpful through the prelims, but it does look like Haley Dockery, our opening winner. Uh, Dockery propelled a great opening start, had enough left in the tank to win it. Great effort by Dockery. It's Kaylee Dockery, your uh, girls' 100 hurdle winner in 16-6. Time now for our boys' 110 hurdles. We'll give you the lane assignments quickly. Clay Stoller of Wing Trace will be in lane one. Jonathan Edder of Continental in lane two. Bo Dwanger of Minster will be in lane three. Ronnie Wise of Delta in lane four. Jeremiah Wolford of Delta in lane five. Cole Plasman of Archibald will be in lane six. Anthony Tomzetsky of Bryan in lane seven. And Max Knapke of Minster will be in lane eight. Yeah, got a little Delta Delta flavor here. Lane four and five. Those are your top two. Keep an eye on them. A wise with the 15.79 and Jeremiah Wolford from Delta. Also 16.35. A little shake and bake action. Who's going to win it from uh, Delta? Well, if there's anybody that can uh, sneak up and bite them, take a look at. Uh, on the lane six, and that's Plasman from Archibald to 16.63. So underway here, you see the two green jerseys out in front. That is the two teammates from Delta. It looks like they're going to be the ones fighting it out. Archibald trying to make a run late, but it looks like our winner is going to be just over 16 seconds. Yeah, Wolford had the lead, but struggled with a couple of hurdles that really cost him. Ronnie Wise takes advantage. Delta and Delta loving each other. We come back now. One of the quickest events of the afternoon would be the girls' 100-meter dash. We'll give you the rain, lane assignments. Julia Durfee of Tenora will be in lane one. Abby Savage of Delta in lane two. Anna Restner of Fort Recovery in lane three. Sydney Sin of Wayne Trace in lane four. Joanna Schneichel of Bryan in lane five. Kylie Williams of Minster in lane six. Chloe Spizak of Bryan in lane seven. Leah Minnick of Liberty Center will be in lane eight. Uh, Sin in lane four, best time, 12-7-5. Uh, if you have Wayne Trace competing, there's always a Sin in it, right? Sydney Sin is fast. Uh, keep an eye on Schenkel, though, in lane five. 12 8, 7 had a great meet down at Lima Bath. Good run so far. Little bit of room out in front, but it does look like Sin is going to take this one. A great run by Sydney Sin. Left no doubt about it. Got a great start. Had a tremendous middle and a great finish. Able to get the win. So it looks like Sydney Sin, your winner of our girls 100. We'll see what the boys can do. And now time for the fastest race of the day. The boys 100 will give you the lane assignments. John Keller of Minster in lane one. Kate Minion of Delta will be in lane two. Samuel Haley of Pettisville in lane three. Joseph Chandler of Emmanuel Christian be in lane four. He just blazed his way through the heats earlier this afternoon. Cole Schweinhagen of Tenora in lane five. Ryland Garza of Bryan in lane six. Graham Askins of Tenora in lane seven. Austin Steinbrunner Fort Recovery in lane eight. Yeah, great description by you, partner, with Chandler. Toledo, Toledo Emmanuel Christian, 11.55, absolutely flew earlier today. You'll see him in lane four. He's got those brilliant neon pink shoes on. A couple of pink, about three of them in pink shoes. Maybe they switched. And this one is going to be a close one. Come on, Sam. Look at Garza from Brian. 
And Rylan Garza, I believe, got the win. Absolutely flew in lane six. A little bit of an upset because Chandler was running so well earlier today. Yeah, we'll see if we can get a uh, score here. They're still working through the uh, scoring, so the clock continues to run until all the numbers go final. I believe that Schweinhagen got second place from Tenora. So unofficially, Garza, Schwanhagen, and Chandler, one, two, and three. Set to go for our girls' four by two relay. We'll give you the lane assignments. Ayersville will be in lane two. Tenora in lane three. Minster lane four. Wayne Trace lane five. Patrick Henry will be in lane six. Your best time, at Minster. What a great weekend they had last week at their own invitational. Lane four, 149.20, two seconds ahead of Wayne Trace in lane five. Uh, Wayne Trace, though, Caroline Winans can get off to a fantastic start. They might have a chance to steal this one. It's just underway here with our girls four by two. One of my favorite races because there is no slowing down in this one. There is, there is run as fast as you can, get it to the next lady, young lady and let her go. So we'll see everyone. Uh, Wayne Trace had the first exchange, I believe. All oh, good handoffs. Yeah, Patrick Henry at lane six doing a good job in first place. That's Gubernath carrying it for them. Minster and Wayne Trace neck and neck. This is gonna turn into what uh, looks like a three team race here. Yeah, Minster had the first exchange on this third leg, and that lead is opening up. That's Kerry Heckman, the super sophomore, extending that lead. So Minster beginning to pull away here in a girls' four by two relay. Thank you. <laughs> Can't say enough about the job of Kerry Heckman putting her team in a great spot to win this. And a larger for uh, Minster carrying it now. And partner, it looks like Minster's gonna get this one easily. What looked like was gonna be a three team battle is beginning to pull away. It looks like Minster's gonna take the win here in our girls four by two. In about a minute and 50 seconds. Rest of the field trying to catch up. A good second place run there. I believe that was Wayne Trace that'll end up second. Time now for the boys. Four by two. We'll give you the lane assignments here as soon as I grab the correct piece of paper. Lane one will have Patrick Henry. Lane two will see the foursome from Pettisville. Lane three will have Minster. Lane four is Delta. Lane five, Tenora. Lane six, Archbold. Lane seven is Holgate. And lane eight is Wayne Trace. Yeah, you're taking a look at your times for this. Your Delta group has the best time, but not by much. Tenora in lane five looks to challenge. Delta carries a 133.41. Tenora, 133.88. If it comes down to the last anchor, take a look at this matchup. James Rupel, the senior for Delta, and Owen Ackerman from Tenora. Uh, he is the anchor for Tenor. Archbold has a pretty competitive time as well at 13406. Their anchor, Rudy Roger, a freshman. And partner, you're telling me Archbold's been busy here of late, haven't they? Yeah, had a uh, meet to yesterday. Went to, um, I guess, Genoa. Genoa, their first ever spring fest, they called it. Uh, Archbold and Liberty Center, in fact, both participated over there. Got admired running uh, on a Friday night and then coming back here Saturday morning and getting back at it. So commands given from the press box here. Set. And we are underway with our boys' 4 by 2 relay. Andy Poppelman for Mincer. Great start. See if Mincer can carry that. Coming up on the first exchange. Ladies in the race before this had tremendous exchanges, no problems at all. And I believe it's Tenora had the first exchange. Yeah, what a run they're having here, the second leg. That's Gavin Eckert 
the senior who is now in first place. Well, neon pink, and what a football player Gavin Eckert was. And as you see here, a really good runner. And this could be green on green here, battling it out. Some trouble for Delta with the exchange, but it looks like the Panthers are going to hang on to second place. It's Justin Rupel that's carrying it for Delta. Had a little bit of an issue with Caden Mignon. It's Rupel and Rupel that will carry the day from here for Delta. But Tenora Ryan Steingas right now going to hand it off to Owen Ackerman with a big lead. You know, one final exchange here in our boys, four by two. Yeah, Ripple doing everything he can to gain ground for Delta. It's down to the last 100 meters. Boy, Ackerman's just been absolutely consistent on his leg. Smooth runner. And he's going to win it for Tenora. Tenora Delta 1-2. Minster's going to work their way into third on that uh, last leg of the race. And Minster couldn't carry the lead that they had with Andy Poppelman. They'll get back in third place, however. But great run by Tenora, especially Owen Ackerman, to get it done. It's a good run by Tenora to win the boys 4 by 2 We'll take a break, have more track here from the Diller Invitational when we return to Ayersville. Just underway now with our girls 1600 meter or for people closer to my partner Miles' age, what he refers to <laughs> as the one mile. <laughs> well, no, regardless, it's four laps around, isn't it? Uh, remember last week when we were at Minster and the great work that Margaret Hemmelgarn did for them? I do. Yeah, she is your, your top time in this at 50812. Uh, some other capable runners from uh, <laughs> Minster as well. Cedarleaf, uh, Cheney Cedarleaf at 52.36. Lauren Sattler from Tenora, 52.13. Uh, you got Kate Thormeyer from Bryan, always capable, 525.54. And from Liberty Center, Michaela Meller at 525.54. 23 or sorry 27 young ladies are running in this today so good solid group to start here Let's see if we can get a look at who our early leader is that's a uh, Hamel Garn in second place and in first place that is uh, Lauren Sattler from Tenora First lap in the books here at our girls 1600 meter. We do have uh, one field event final we would like to tell you about. Uh, Josie Boti of uh, Minster, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Josie, I apologize, is our uh, pole vault winner here today going 9-3 was three inches better than Paige Boyer of Patrick Henry, who went second, vaulting in nine feet. So that is our girls pole vault. So our girls 1600. Now we're going to see a good battle up front here, partner. Yeah, it looks like Hemelgarn making a move on the outside. Want to make that move before you get to the turn. And good job on the pole vault results that you just announced. Good thing they got done early as opposed to later because that wind is really kicking up. Yeah, it picked up, and we wondered if they were going to get to a completion. So we'll stick here for just a minute. We'll see if there is a lead change in our 1600 meter run. A pretty good work there by Sattler keeping Hemelgarn at bay. Looked like Hemelgarn was gonna try and overtake her before the turn, wasn't able to get it done. You wonder if Hemelgarn expended too much energy there. I believe that's Thornmeyer for Brian in third place. So halfway through our 1600, we do have a new leader out there, partner. Yeah, Helmogard was able to take it over on that straightaway. Spent a lot of energy on the back turn to get in position. See if she's going to be able to hold on to it the rest of the way. So halfway through our 1600, we'll take a break. We'll see how this finishes up when we return here to Ayersville. Still a good race up front here as we get down to our final lap of the girls. A 1600-meter run. It's been a good battle up in that front spot and partner with believe we have the old leader back out in front. Yeah, Helmut Garn. Remember the heat condition she had to run in last week down at Minster? Well, big difference here today. However, we wondered if she spent too much energy early in the race. She might have. 
because you take a look at the young lady from Tenora, Lauren Sattler, she's been able to regain the lead. So Lauren Sattler in Tenora coming down to the front stretch, putting a little distance between herself and Hemelgarn as they wrap up our girls 1600. It's a good run for Sattler. She'll get it in about five minutes and 19 seconds. About two seconds better than Hemelgarn for second. Yeah, what great mental toughness exhibited by Sattler though. Lost the lead, looked mm -hmm. like Hemelgarn was gonna win the race and then had enough mental fortitude to come back and get it done on the last 200 meters to steal, steal this victory. Solid run for uh, Kate Thormeyer for Brian who finishes in third. Randy Roberts, Miles Holiday, back with you here at the Ayersville uh, Diller Invitational. We want to tell you that today's track invitational is presented by Charles River in Spencerville. The premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio is expanding. Learn more and apply today at jobs.criver.com. The gun you heard is the start of our boys' 1600 meter run. Miles, who are we looking for in this one? Oh boy, Randy, this is a great heat because there are seven runners under five minutes Coming into the day, your best time. Jackson Durfee from Tenor, a 5 2 four, four, eight, six. Jose Blanco from Fayette, second best time, 4 3 9 even. Some other guys of note Zach McWaters from Pettisville, 4 4 5 2 7. Logan Coy of Tenor, 4 4 4 point one three. Jack Grisop of Minster, 4 4 1 point eight zero. Wyatt Mitchell, 4 4 9 even. Jack Leppelmeyer from Pettisville, 453.22. Two. No doubt Jack can beat his dad in a race. Not sure Coach Leppelmeyer can run distance anymore. Jack, yeah, if you're doing something wrong, good to know that you can always outrun Coach. <laughs> That's right. I don't know if distance running was dad strong soon. No. So here we see the uh, opening lap miles starting to thin out a little bit. We saw kind of a large front group, but uh, we're beginning to see a handful at least kind of separate themselves. Now it looks like Jackson Durfee has grabbed the lead on the first lap, and he is wasting no time about it, partner. He is extending it early. So we do have uh, some more field event finals beginning to uh, trickle in here from uh, earlier today. We could tell you that in the girls' shot put, Jolyn Ice from Holgate, our winner here at the Earsville uh, Diller Invitation with a winning throw 36 feet, 11 and a half inches, besting Olivia Smith of Delta, who was uh, second with a, a throw of 33, five and a half, and Kathleen Stoller of Wayne Trace, third in the girls' shot put, going 30 feet, four inches. So Jolene Ice of Holgate, your girls' shot put winner as a Minster beginning to distance themselves from Patrick Henry in the uh, girls' team standings a little bit. Take a look at Durfee as he hits the straightaway. Got off to a great start. All he's done is extended that lead. I believe that's Wyatt Mitchell in second place from Fayette. But Durfee been impressive so far. Durfee pulling away as you see second and third. And a little distance back to fourth, so our leaders have really thinned out here. So we are halfway through our boys' 1600. We'll take a break. We'll see how this plays out when we return here on WOSM. So about half a lap left to go here in our boys' 1600. And a partner, I think we know who's going to win this race, but we've got a pretty good battle for second going on here. Yeah, Jackson Durfee doing a great job. Uh, took command of this race early. Is not released that, that at all. And Logan Miller who we incorrectly thought he was a runner from Fayette and Wyatt Mitchell. Logan Miller has been hanging out in second and our third place, and we believe that is Cole Moorhead from Wayne Trace currently in second place. So we want to thank uh, all of our underwriting sponsors who made our day possible today, including Charles River, the Four County Career Center, Northwest State Community College, and Tablers drive through So speaking of driving through, driving through some of this wind and picking up a good win in the boys' 1600, is yeah i believe that's jackson durfee that gets the win it is and coming in second place going to be wayne trace and then followed by holgate it's a good effort there jackson durfee picks up the win and our boys 1600 pretty good effort out of him and we'll have more here from Mearsville.
Well, we'll head back to the relays. And now at the uh, Diller Invitational Miles, it's the girls' four by 100 meter relay. We'll give you the lane assignments here. We'll see Brian in lane two. Patch Kenry will be in lane three. Minster in lane four. Delta in lane five. And Ayersville will be in lane six. Now, partner, your exchanges on this race are so important. These times are pretty tight. Minster, though, your best time in lane four, five, 2.44. Keep an eye on Delta in lane five, your second best time at 5351. Patrick Henry in lane three, your third best at 5461. Minster, if they need to get bailed out, Kylie Williams in uh, the third rung of this race will have a big chance to do it. Anchor for them, Macy Pringer, the junior, will be the anchor for them. So you hear the whistle, so it sounds like we are just about ready to go. This Ayersville team in lane six had a tremendous relay team a year ago. So being their own Invitational, they might surprise you today. Great foursome of Sheets, Sheets, Dockery, and Schindler. Ladies have run together for a long time. So you hear a big gust of wind starting as the gun goes off to begin our girls four by one relay. As Laney Sheets for Ayersville gonna be Close for the first handoff, giving it to Neva Sheets. And I believe as Minster, though, they had the first one. Lexi Niemeyer, the senior, carrying it now, about ready to take the lead. Yeah, going from second out in front. Here comes the second exchange. Pretty clean one for the Wildcats. Yeah, had a fall down in lane three. Patrick Henry had a runner go down after the exchange. But it is Minster that is carrying this relay. Still looks like the white flag up, so it looks like a good exchange here. Now the final 100 meters here as we uh, wrap up our girls four by one. It's gonna be a battle for third place. Looks like Delta's gonna take it after Ayersville finishes in second. It's a good win for Minster here. Let's we'll see if we can get a time before they switch to the boys. Again, they have the Scoring tied to the uh, scoreboard. There it is, 52.6. You're a winner for Minster and a girls four by one. Up now is the boys four by one. And Miles taking a look at some of the times. This looks like it's gonna be fairly competitive race. I'll give you the lane assignments. We'll see Minster in lane two. Patch Kenner will be in lane three. Delta in lane four. Archibald in lane five. Tenora in lane six. Ayersville in lane seven and Brian will be in lane eight. Yeah, this race is faster than a hiccup. Don't miss it, folks. Stay here with us. Archibald looks like you're uh, second to best time in lane five uh, uh, with a four, five, seven, two Delta though. Best time in this in lane four. Good day for Delta so far. Been competitive in every single race. A four, five, a six, nine, and your last two runners for Delta. See if this sounds familiar for you. Rupel and Rupel. Uh, it's a Justin and James. They had the anchor leg earlier today. They're going to carry that anchor again today uh, to Noro 4574 in lane six. Ayersville in lane seven of four, six, four, th or three, zero. Partner Patrick Henry's got a chance to steal this as well. Very competitive race. Patrick Henry with a 4583. And Thomas Smith is their anchor. That's a young man. We saw him in basketball. Mm -hmm. he, he has got incredible ability with those legs. Top seed times about a second and a half off of what the meet record is. Don't know if that is in danger with the weather that uh, we've got today. But boy, what uh, what a difference a week makes compared to where we were at down in Minster last weekend, uh, as opposed to a couple of us on the crew in our uh, well, certainly full winter uniforms today. <laughs> it is. You got the winter hat on. Uh, but it makes sense that it's warmer in Minster. It's closer to the equator, right? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. A little science for you. Underway now with the boys four by one. So Brian in that outside lane in the purple. They got the early advantage, but it, things will change as they make that first turn. Change they will. They went three wide for the lead there early on. Yeah, I believe it's Tenor now out in the lead. Gavin Eckert recognizes those shoes. Makes the exchange to Joey Gussinger. Miles had talked a little bit about Delta and what they've been able to do in the running events. See the Panthers make a run there. This one is going to be close. One is the Panthers are going to take the lead. Now, Rupel to Rupel. 
And how do you spell victory? It is R-U-P-L-E for Delta. Rupo and Rupo get it done. Delta's going to win this one at about 45, 46 seconds. It looks like Tenora Ayersville go second and third. As we'll see if we can get what the official time will be here. But it did look like Delta able to cruise to a win. So waiting uh, just momentarily, they're going to clear the clock. 45-7, your winning time for the Delta Panthers. Yeah, just off the meet record of 4-4-2-0, authored by Tenora in 2007. So up for the uh, next race will be the 400s. We'll have that next. We return here to Ayersville. Randy Roberts, Miles Holiday, back with you here at the Diller Invitational at Ayersville. We want to tell you that today's Diller Invitational is presented by Charles River Spenceville, the premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio, is expanding. Learn more and apply today at jobs.criver.com. It's the girls' 400 meter dash. This one's going to be a quick one. It looks like the uh, fairly competitive race here. Montessa Vollmer of Bryan will be in lane one. Megan Meyer, Patrick Henry in lane two. Caroline Winans of Wayne Trace in lane three. Sydney Sin of Wayne Trace in lane four. Taylor Roth of Minster in lane five. Anna Christman of Patrick Henry will be in lane six. Anna Rossner of Fort Recovery in lane seven. Ava Salmon of Minster will be in lane eight. Arguably one of the most grueling races of the day. You have to sprint as fast as you can all the way around in one furious lap. Sydney Sin in lane four, best time, uh, five, seven, one, eight. Keep an eye on her. If she uh, gets off to a great start, partner, she might break the meet record of five, eight, eight, zero, set in 2010 by Catherine Jamison of Ottawa Hills. Catherine Jamison had quite a high school career. For the Green Bears, getting a lot of practice, couple blocks away at Costa Del Holiday. <laughs> uh, Taylor Roth from Minster, one minute. She is your second best time in this race and sent off to a really good start. She had a great run earlier today. Look at her strides, just not missing a beat on that back straightaway. See if she's able to cut through what's been a windy day. Able to take the lead from the middle lane. So yeah, a little bit of a commanding lead as she makes this last turn. She'll be going right into the win, about 40 seconds right now on the clock. It's not really racing the clock, well, she knows. Trying to set the record here. But a good one, two here, looking for a time of 58.80. See if she is able to set it. She's gonna cross right at about 58. This one's gonna be close. Hey, she took the gas off the pedal a little bit on her last two steps, knew she had the victory. It might have cost her to meet record, but I think she was just happy to get the win and you know, not to be outdone. Uh, Taylor Roth from Minster came in second. She ran a great race as well. So waiting to see if we can get the official time as we look up at the football scoreboard here. They let the clock run until they look at the times. 58.6. Yeah, new meet record for her. Congratulations. Sydney Sin getting it done. So Sydney Sin sets the meet record 58-6, and we'll see what the boys can do. Time now for a boys 400 dash. We'll see Lucas Thibano of a Minster in lane one, Ryan Stengis of Tenora in lane two, ran a landing Graphis of Pettisville in lane three, Brody Devlin of Bryan will be in lane four, Dustin Haas of Tenora in lane five, James Rupel of Delta in lane six, Matthew Niekamp of Minster in lane seven, Alex York of Delta will be in lane eight. My partner, it looks like Steingas and uh, uh, Grafis uh, from uh, Pettisville and Tenora, it looks like those two are going to sit this one out. Lanes two and three are open, so keep an eye on lane one, th uh, four, five, and six. Your best time uh, coming into this, uh, Broden Devlin. Brody Devlin from uh, Brian, uh, 5202, Dustin Haas of Tenora, 5257, and Haas is off to a tremendous start. Just underway here in our 400. And you got Rupel up there as well from Delta. He is currently in first, but look at Haas. He is gaining ground quickly. So we'll see them come back together into a group here as they make the turn. 
Yeah, this is gonna be neck and neck as they come around the turn here. On the inside as well, Devlin making the move. Devlin came from third place to grab this. Rupel trying to gain up ground. Well, making one mad dash to the finish line and it looks like Devlin O'Brien is going to be your 400 winner. A well played strategy by Devlin. He was almost aforementioned, hiding out four guys back and then really kicked it in on the last turn. And Brody Devlin, smart race, better feet to get it done. It wins in 52.9, so that is your winning time for Devlin. So just about set for our boys, 300 uh, hurdles. It'll be Max Kanapke of Minster in lane one, Bo Dwanger of Minster in lane two, Hudson Myers of Wayne Trace will be in lane three, Eli Mora of Delta in lane four, Cole Anders of Tenora in lane five, Cameron Laney North Central in lane six, Jeremiah Wolford of Delta in lane seven, Landon Crew of Archibald in lane eight. It's Eli Mora from Delta with the best time, 4-2-2-0. Looks to be challenged by Hudson Myers. Young man had a great basketball season for Wayne Trace. Cole Anders from Tenora also had one runner go down on a hurdle. Hopefully he's gonna be okay. Saw that in some of the earlier heats. As we've got one who separated himself from the rest of the group here. That's Eli Mora gonna win this one. Mora in that middle lane is gonna pick up the win here. We will see if we can get what the official time for the young man will be. Cole Anders from Tenora looks like he's gonna grab second place. Eli Mora though, tremendous. His technique coming over top of the hurdles was fantastic. So I see him begin to clear some of the hurdles away. We're seeing if we can get what that official time will be. Just trying to successfully kill enough time here, but it does give us the opportunity to tell you did have a few more field event results come in. Tyson Schlachter of Ayersville, our boys discus winner today with the throw of 148.7. <laughs> and the girls long jump, Mara Pearson of Fort Recovery, the winner setting a new meet record with a time of 18 feet, uh, half an inch. As we said earlier, Jolyn Ice of uh, Hol uh, Holgate, girls shot put winner going 36.11.5. So hurdle events are wrapped up. And we will take a break here. More track next on WOSN. We are ready to go with the girls 800 miles. What uh, what are we looking for in this one? And partner, there's Sydney Sin, and there's the rest of the field. Sydney Sin, best time. The senior, absolutely sensational, 2.18.06. She is a good 10 seconds ahead of about everybody else in the field. Some other names that could challenge Mara Smith from Brian, Anna Helmogarn from Minster, Kira Behenna from uh, Wayne Trace, and uh, there is your top runners. There are 12 runners competing in this right now. And again, we want to tell you that today's Diller Invitational is presented by Charles River in Spencerville. The premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio is expanding. Learn more and apply today at jobs.criver.com. Well, the young lady from Wayne Trace, Sydney Sin, already with one meet record in the books. We take a look here, Miles, see the seed time. 218.06, a second faster than the meet record, which by the way, Sydney Sid broke a year ago. <laughs> she has been absolutely insane today. She looks to challenge yet another record. Randy, remember that record she broke today? She kind of coasted through the finish line, but still able to get it done. You'll see a true, true look at exactly where everybody exhibits their place on the track as they make that turn and get position. But one thing you need to know, Sydney Sin, way out front. It completed the first lap in about a minute and 12 seconds. A little bit off her pace. That's uh, Anna Helmogarn, I believe, from Minster, the freshman, hanging out in second place. But Sydney Sin is set a pace that is absolutely impressive. She is not 
left her stride. Talk about the conditioning she's in, and I believe it's a Wayne Trace 1-2 now. You know, it looks like her teammate has moved into second place. Akira Behenna, I believe that's how you say it. It's a good uh, run here for the Lady Raiders, taking the top two spots. And right now, we are focused on Sydney Sin, trying to see if she can come within striking distance of owning yet another meet record. Now officially owns two. She is the record holder of this 800 run. Set it last year, 219.57. Looks like she's not gonna quite get there this year, but still enough, Sydney Sin's gonna be a double winner. Now Wayne Trace gonna be one, two, followed by Minster in third. Hemelgarn gets the third place. It's a good run for Sydney Sin as she captures our girls 800. Turn our attention now to the Boys 800 uh, run and a uh, partner, one name kind of sticks out from the rest here as we take a look at this one. Yeah, when you look at the list and you see the times, you have to do a double take. Jackson Durfee from Tenora, two minutes, 39 tenths. Unbelievable. He is absolutely flying around. He's your best time. Now, this is an impressive field because Jack Gricehop from Minster, 203. And Joe Jose Blanco from Fayette at 203. Also, those guys will challenge the blur that is Durfee on this race. So we saw Durfee already pick up a win today as well. As you heard the gun sound underway with our 800. We call officially an 800 run. I know before I've called it a dash. It's not really dashing 800 meters. Well, you'd argue the really good ones. That's what they're doing. They're dashing around it twice. But this group out front, you can throw a blanket over them right now. See if they can separate themselves once they come around the turn. They might be doing it uh, to get heat. It is so cold in this place today. I don't know how these young men and young ladies are, are running in the, the track outfit. Absolutely bitter conditions out here right now. You see the officials waste no time, so they are definitely speeding things up to get our Diller Invitational underway. There is the young man out in front. You mentioned him. Jackson Durfee of the Rams taking advantage here. Uh, this big three-way battle for second. Is he Blanco making a move to get second place? Come on, Come on, Took it away from Jack Greeshop of Minster. So they settle uh, into single file. Now it looks like it's going to be a three-man race from here on out. Will any be able to catch a Durfee? Yet to be determined, but those are the three runners that are going to make a shot at it. Durfee, though, look at that stride. So impressive on the back stretch. How good a condition is that, young man? So Durfee working his way here. You see Blanco digging on, digging on that back turn. He is doing absolutely everything he can, but Durfee, so impressive. Jackson Durfee beginning to pull away. Come in with a seed time of uh, just over two minutes, two minutes, 0.39. He's not going to quite do that. Not ideal conditions, but still wins this one in 2.05. But a good run for Blanco for second, Grease Hop for third. So top three win, partner, about the way you thought it would. They sure did. Jackson Durfee might be the most impressive athlete out here today. I don't even know if he's breathing heavy after finishing that. So our boys 800 in the books. We'll take a timeout. We'll come back. More track coming your way here from Ayersville. Time now for our girls at 200 here at the uh, Diller Invitational. Again, our uh, Diller Invitational is presented by Charles River and Spencerville. The premier pharmaceutical chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio is expanding. Learn more and apply today at jobs.criver.com. We'll give you the lane assignments here. Chloe Spizak of Bryan will be in lane one. Mary Pearson of Fort Recovery in lane two. Jolana Schneckel of Bryan in lane three. Allie Schindler of Ayersville in lane four. Taylor Roth of Minster be in lane five. Anna Rossner of Fort Recovery in lane six. Carrie Heckman of Minster in lane seven. Ada Christman of Patrick Henry will be in lane eight. Well, partner, you know whose uh, favorite race is the 200, don't you? Who's? Our broadcast partner, Mark Shine. Absolutely loves the 200. He stopped up here earlier today to visit with us. It's good to see him. Uh, this is going to be a great race. Keep an eye on lane four. Allie Schindler from Ayersville. 
2766. But Taylor Roth, a young lady we know a lot about from Minster, real close at 2782. And there's a freshman in lane three, Jolana Schenkel from Bryan. She's going to be a fantastic runner. 2831. And if you want to check out some serious hair, check out Jolana. She has got some beautiful hair. You'll see her coming around that turn. Love this race because when I hit the straightaway, you can see how fast they're going around that last turn. All kind of hush as we wait for this one. Everyone looks like they are ready to go. And underway with our 200. Start just on the outside to the corner. And Roth got off to a great start. But I don't know if she's going to have enough on this straightaway. Look at Schindler battling for first. This one four-way close one. And it looks like our winner is going to come from lane three. Yeah, Jolana Schenkel from Bryan. She came into the third best time, gets the best time. There, the freshman with the beautiful hair gets the victory. Boy, she is going to have an electric career for the next three years. Let's see if we can get an official time here while they work on the timers. So we wait uh, very patiently. See, as we check out the scoreboard, we see the time still running. They let it go, and it is lane three, 27 8, I do believe. That's a great time. Uh, takes off a five, five half of a five tenths of a second uh, you, for you a time. You what you're trying yeah. to say. Math, fantastic work right there. Here we go, the boys 200. Sean Adkins of Pettisville being lane one. Owen Berner of Ayersville in lane two. Ryland Garza, Brian in lane three. Brody Devlin of Brian, uh, of Brian in lane four. Joseph Chandler, Emmanuel Christian in lane five. Owen Ackerman, Tenora, lane six. John Keller, Minster, lane seven. Cole Schweinhagen of Tenora will be in lane eight. Your best time, uh, Brody Devlin in lane four has had himself a really good day. 23.92. Garza from Brian, his teammate, 2462. Joseph Chandler from uh, Emmanuel Christian, 2445. Don't forget about Owen Burner, a young man we've seen on the football field from Ayersville. He runs fast as well. That's exactly what they're doing right now as they've made the turn halfway through this 200. Well, Brian and Brian Love in one and two right here. Two teammates pushing each other. It looks like the Golden Bears are going to take the top two spots. Yeah, Brody Devlin uh, just a little bit a uh, front of Rylan Garza, but it's going to be Brian at one and two. Uh, they got to be very excited about that. It's a good look for the Golden Bears again. They will show us the uh, final times here momentarily. They have to uh, make sure that they, the scores of the computer match what they have on the scoreboard. So it is just a very, very slight delay as the scoring, the computer scoring comes in. It's a much different day than Miles' day and age. 23-9, your winning time from lane four. Getting down to the last couple of events of the afternoon here at the Diller Invitational and the longest individual run coming up here, the 3200. We start with the girls and uh, partner, what do we got here? We have three young ladies that uh, under 12 minutes. Uh, Kate Thormeyer from Bryan, your best time, 1139. Uh, Lauren Sattler from Tenora, young lady we saw earlier do a great job, 1145. Jocelyn Welch from Delta, 11 of 4 7. Those three have your best time all under 12 minutes. It's going to be a long race, but if you're in the stands, you have to, at some point in time, think maybe it's better to be out there running because you're moving. Good way to stay warm. It is. Uh, you're, you're fighting not only everyone else on the track, but there's. Uh, conditions that you're dealing with and a lot of these distance runners cross-country runners as well and you're dealing with uh this is more kind of fall end of the year cross-country weather than what you'd expect 
as we get to the end of uh, April and really kind of look towards the postseason for track, which is starting up league beats just a couple of weeks away now. Yeah, 23 young ladies scheduled to run in this. So important if you're going to be a leader to get out in front, that way you can avoid bodies in the early part of the race. You want to get out and extend, set the pace, leave no, to about, no doubt about it that you're going to be in the top three or four. So we see them run mostly single file about the first half dozen or so. It looks like Sattler leading the way with Thornmeyer in second place. Good pace here early on, about a minute 20 of that opening lap. And they got to deal with uh, windy conditions as well. So just underway with our girls 3200, we'll take a break and we'll have more as we continue here at the Diller Invitational at Ayersville. Final lap and now being run in our girls 3200 partner. Lauren Sattler of Tenor has put on a show. Yeah, she sure has. Has not left that pace the whole race. And if you look in second place, Kate Thormeyer from Bryan, she's run a really good race as well. But she's not even in shouting distance because of the impressive race by Lauren Sattler. Sattler set the uh, pace early as Biles had said and has just put on a show. She's lapped roughly half the field as they've strung out here over the course of the eight laps. Yeah, she's making her final turn and Thormai will be getting her uh, third turn of this last lap. Yeah, it's easily a good 100 meters, if not a little more. Sattlers come down here, getting a nice round of applause from the uh, Hardy fans that have uh, stayed here till the end. They are bundled up. It's a cold one. Sattler's going to win this one in about 11.39. A great mental toughness by Sattler, not only battling the type of race it is, but battling the conditions. Sattler, she is one tough, mentally tough individual. Yeah, Thormeyer is going to collapse as soon as she crosses. She's going to finish second. I believe that's going to be Minster that's going to come in third with Liberty Center fourth. Boys have taken the track now for their turn at the 3200 as our uh, meet officials are very quickly giving everyone directions here. I think they are in a hurry to wrap this thing up. Partner, who are we looking forward to in this one? Uh, top two runners are head and shoulders above everybody else in the field. Uh, Xander Fackelman from Bryan. You remember last year he used to chase Josh Taylor around uh, quite a bit. He always seemed like he was coming in second behind Josh from Bryan, but Xander now leading away 950.32. He's got the best time, followed by Trevor Heitkamp from Fort Recovery at 954.99. Partner, those are the only two underneath 10 minutes. One guy that might look to challenge Jose Blanco from Fayette. We've seen him run effectively throughout the day. He is a 10 2 4, but it promises to be a two man race. If you're looking for a fourth name, maybe Paul Restrick from Tenora. He's a 10 to 5. So underway as we see already. As Miles had said, kind of two breaking away here early on. And it looks like uh, Fackler settled into that second spot, trying to get a better idea on who's winning, leading this one early on. Yeah, Fackler in second. It's High Camp leading away from Fort Recovery. But you'll quickly see those two guys get out in front of the rest of the field. So they've done that to here early on. We may see a quick change of leadership at this race. Fackler, Fackler's not going to let that hair slow him down. I can appreciate that. Now Fackler going to make a move here. You remember uh, Josh Taylor from Bryan. He would always run as fast as he could on that first lap to extend everybody, kind of break the will of the rest of the field. You wonder if Fackler is a guy that uh, wants to use that same type of thought process. And we got Tenora settling in on third. Looked like he was going to try to make a challenge, but looks like he's backing off a little bit. Good job, Jace. So the runners. Continue on here, a lap into our 3200. We'll take a break and have more when we return. Well, we wrap up our boys 3200 here, partner, down to our final lap, and it uh, 
turned into a two-horse race down to a one-horse race. They got to give a lot of credit to Xander Let's Fackler. Go, Dude had a plan. Dude executed the plan. Lap number seven absolutely took off past Trevor Heitkamp, who's ran a great race. But he just wore Heitkamp out, kind of drafted behind him, and then put his foot on the gas, and he's going to win this one pulling away. Now look at him. He is extending and now really pushing it for the final 100. Just able to get all the way to the finish line. He's going to finish on a strong suit about 947 for the win in our boys 32. Doesn't really look all that winded as he stands at the finish line. Yeah, I like how he stands and then turns it and looks at the rest of the guys finishing, like, where are you at? Impressive stuff out of him. Trevor Heitkamp going to finish right there. He's going to get second. Ran a tremendous race. Ran Really led about three quarters of this race. In just over 10 minutes, about a 13-second win for Fackler. And the, those two have really separated themselves from everyone else. And now... Some of the other guys still being shown two laps to go. Uh, how about the work by Jose Blanco being able to come from all the way back at eighth and get the third spot as he finishes right there. So Blanco finishes third. Everyone else about a lap to go, but our leaders in for the 3200. Fackler, the impressive win. We'll take one more break. We'll have our final event of the afternoon, the 4x4 relays next here on WOSN. Brady Roberts Miles Holiday back with you here at Ayersville. It's just about ready to wrap up the uh, Diller Invitational for 2023, our final event of uh, the afternoon. And it looks like it's coming at the right time as uh, the runners out on the track look a little cold, partner. <laughs> sure as we do. We wrap things up with a 4x4 relay. We'll start with our girls 4x4. And the lane assignments are as follows. We'll see Paulding set up in lane one. Tenora will be in lane two. Fort Recovery in lane three. Wayne Trace in lane four. Minster in lane five. Patrick Henry in lane six. Brian in lane seven. Liberty Center will be in lane eight. Now lane four, Wayne Trace had themselves a great day. Uh, they're the top time at 407.59. And if it comes down to the anchor, they got to like their position they're in because it'll be Sydney Sin that'll be running it for them. Yeah. A Minster in lane five. Uh, looks the like challenge at 408.88 is a great group. Also, Taylor Roth leading it off for Minster. Wayne Trace, uh, Caroline Winans getting it started for them. So, underway here with our uh, final girls event of the afternoon, the 4x4 four four relay. Wayne Trace coming from that middle lane has worked their way up into second so far. You'll get a true indication of where the teams are as they hit this straightaway to coming towards the press box and our bottom cam. And it is Wayne Trace leading the way. Winans doing a great job to freshman getting her team off to a fast start. Here the Raiders. Seem to have this running thing figured out. Now take a look at Minster trying to battle for second place. Patrick Henry holding them off. That's Megan Meyer for Patrick Henry doing a great job holding on to second. And Liberty Center in that uh, outside lane, a part of that battle as well. Tigers falling off a little bit. Minster's going to take over that second spot from the Patriots. A good battle between second and third, but Wayne Trey still holding on to first place. A good run out of the Raiders. Well, Wayne Trace had themselves a heck of a day so far today. Really good relays throughout the whole day. And of course, we've seen the action that Sydney Sin can do when she's running by herself. Definitely an athlete we're going to see down in Columbus at the end of the year. So Raiders continuing to add on to their lead here. Second exchange coming up as we get halfway through this 4x400 relay. Bethany Miller scheduled to take the baton for the third leg for Wayne Trace. And 
That lead is extending Minster in second place. That is uh, Kerry Heckman carrying it for Minster, the sophomore. Yeah, Raiders able to be up around the corner in turn one before second place Minster is able to complete its handoff. That tells you the distance that they have between them. I look at Carly Gubernath, though, for Patrick Henry. She is eating up some track, trying to get her team into second position. And Gubernath making a move here. They've got Minster in their sights, looking for that number two spot. Now, Gubernath was on a torrid pace until she hit the turn. It was almost like a wall. Reminded her to slow down. See handoff. Number three now being completed. Kerry Heckman able to hold off Patrick Henry to keep second place for Minster. And Minster able to extend on PH. Hold on to that second place, see what Patriots can do here. Yeah, a little bit of an issue on the exchange for Patrick Henry going to cost them. It is a clear one, two, and three now on the track. Wayne Trace, Minster, and Patrick Henry. Yeah, Fort Recovery running in fourth, really the only big battle way back in fifth. We see Liberty Center, Tenora, each battling. They were neck and neck during the uh, final exchange. They run a little bit further back in the pack for fifth, but... Uh, as Miles had mentioned, this one is going to be wing traces to lose. That's Graziani for uh, Tenora and Conrad for Liberty Center. Uh, battling out, trying to get that fourth fifth spot. But Sydney Sin, no doubt about it. Partner, I don't even think she's breathing hard. What an impressive relay put out by the ladies of Wayne Trace. Now Wayne Trace will win this one about 4-11. We'll see Minster in second, Patrick Henry will come home in third. That's it. Ada Christman for Patrick Henry, securing a third place. And for Mincer, that was Ava Steeman getting it done. Ready to go for our final event of the uh, day now, the boys 4x4 four four relay. We'll give you the, the uh, quick lane assignments here. Brian will be in lane one, Archibald in lane two, Paulding in lane three, Delta will be in lane four, Tenora lane five, Minster lane six, Liberty Center lane seven, Holgate will be in lane eight. Now Deltas have themselves a pretty good day. They're the top time in uh, lane number four. And remember, it's a Rupal and Rupal to close it out for those guys. Three, three, four point three nine. That's Eli Mora. Eli Mora starting it out. He'll hand it off to Alex York. Uh, Tenor, your best time. Uh, they're not too far off at 336.87. Great foursome of Haas, Eckert, Steingast, and Anders. If it comes down to Anders and Rupal for Delta and Tenora, watch out. It's going to be a great finish. Yeah, great start for the teams in orange, both Liberty Center and Minster, you see Delta Tenora right there with them, and we're gonna see a good battle here as they turn and head down the front stretch. That's Poppleman and Rosebrook for uh, Minster and Liberty Center. They got the teams off to a pretty good start in contention. Delta saw that, and they were challenged, and they have responded. Eli Mora, impressive on his first lap. Good run so far now, we'll see. If anyone has trouble in any of the handoffs, that's a big part uh, of anything here in this boys' 4x4. Four four. Yeah, a little bit of a slow exchange for Tenora. Kind of cost him, allowed Minster to solidify that second spot. And Delta leading away. Alex York carrying it. Ge Gavin Eckert, really good runner, carrying it now for Tenora. And for Minster, that is uh, Jake Gracehop. Sorry, partner, cut you off. Yeah, Delta... I was going to say, Delta Minster and Tenora kind of separated themselves. So our four-team race that we had a lap ago thinned out to three, and now it looks like that might even be trimmed mm -hmm. down to two here. Yeah, Matt, uh, Minster making a move right here. Jack Grasshop trying to steal the lead. But Alex York saying, no, no, I want to hold on to it. And it's going to be Minster going to be first on the exchange zone. Yeah, they were side by side. Now who's going to have the better exchange here? And they continue to battle this out. What a way to close our Diller Invitational here with the exciting 4x4. Yeah, a subtle move, but Lucas Thibodeau 
uh, for Minster. Great job. Got the baton. Did you see what he did? Got to the inside lane right mm -hmm. away. Uh, blocked off Delta right away. Great job by Minster. So Minster now pulling away from Delta a little bit. Tenora trying to stay within striking distance. Rams weighs uh, back uh, in third. Then you go back uh, quite a bit even further to Liberty Center in fourth. Uh, Thebo looks like he's slowing down uh, just a bit. Going to allow Rupel to have a chance on this straightaway. Rupel kicking it in right now. This is where Delta's made their money. Panthers are going to reclaim the lead. And now a chance here, one final set of exchanges. Rupel returns a favor, gets a baton, and heads to the inside. And he is shot out of a cannon. That's Matthew Nykamp for Minster. 1-2 battle right there. Nykamp and Rupel for first and second. Tenora, distant third. So we will see how this plays out. Half a lap to go in our 4x4 relay. An exciting way to close out another very compelling and entertaining Diller Invitational. Rupel continuing to hang on to that lead for Delta. Nykamp going to have to kick it in right now if he's going to have a chance. Look at the determination on Rupel's face. Takes a little bit of a peek. And a teammate cheering him on. He's able to cross the finish line at about 337. Delta Minster Tenora will go one, two, three, and that's how they wrap up and run our boys' four by four relay. Hey, the formula of Rupel to Rupel on three and four for Delta has worked all day long. Works yet again. Great job by Delta getting the four by four. Now that's going to wrap up our coverage uh, here from Ayersville. Want to thank everyone for. Uh, giving us the opportunity to come up here. Partner, anything else you want to add? No, great day. This is fun to see these young men and ladies improve incrementally as the season goes on because we're going to hit that turn into May. Next thing you know, we're going to be in Columbus. I want to thank all of our underwriting sponsors for making our day here uh, possible. They include Charles River, the Four County Career Center, Northwest State Community College, and Tablers drive Through. Coaches, Anything else, my friend? No. Enjoy it, folks. This was a fun one to call. So I thank uh, our crew sticking it out in the cold weather. So, uh, Jacob, uh, not all that bundled up. Kelsey might be a little cold down there. But. Yeah, Kelsey was a real warrior today, battling the elements, getting those uh, bottom cam shots for you folks. So we thank everyone uh, for being a part of this. So for my partner, Miles Holliday, and our entire WOSN crew, I'm Randy Roberts. Thanks for watching, everyone.